Hi and welcome to the overview video for Trebox One. The purpose of the video is to give you a quick overview of the software and show how it works and also to show you where the tools are to get started with the trial. At the top of the screen we can see that we've got seven modules, orders, products, shipping, reports, channels, contacts and summaries as well as some menu options in the top right hand corner. So let's start with channels. The channels module shows you all of the different online channels that you're integrated with, it shows you the status of those channels, how many orders you've downloaded, how many are open, turnover, the status of them, the last time you did a sync. And this is also the screen where you would create those connections. You do that very simply by clicking on new, choosing a channel from the drop down list, and then walking through a wizard. At the end of the wizard, after you've completed all of the questions, all of your settings are held within each individual channel. So if we open up Shopify, we can see all of our connection settings are held here and the settings are split into separate tabs, tabs that handle how the VAT is going to be dealt with, a list of your orders, the sales, statuses which allow us to map the online marketplace status against the trade box status and if you do have an accountancy package plugged in, which order statuses are going to go across to that accounts package. The settings established in each individual channel determine what type of orders you're going to download, how frequently you're going to download them, and if you're going to upload any stock back to your sales channel, as well as if you wish to pass any information to an integrated accounts package. When you first install the software, you'll decide where stock's going to be controlled. So we go to configuration and preferences and stock control. We can see that stock control for this setting has been set up for Tradebox to be in control, but you could just as easily slave your stock control to an integrated accounts package. If you do have an accounts package integrated, again, if you go to accounting, you'll decide here whether it's going to be Sage 50 or zero or none at all. Going forward, we're going to start adding more accounts packages to the software. If you are going to have stock control turned on, you will need to import your products within the product section. This is really dependent upon where the stock control is coming from. If it's coming from an accounts package, we'll simply import all of the products from that accounts package into the product section within Tradebox, and then we'll match them to the SKUs that you have online. If stock is being controlled by Tradebox, then you can import your products either from a file or from an integrated sales channel. The product section also holds a relationship between the online SKU and the SKU within Tradebox. So we can see that within the product mapping section where we've got a marketplace SKU and a Tradebox SKU. And if we were using an accounts package as a stock control, that would also be matched to the SKU inside the accounts package. Once you have your product set up and you've established all your configuration within your channels, to decide which order should be downloaded and whether or not you're going to upload stock and where that stock is going to come from, you can turn on the Tradebox service. The Tradebox service is an automated system which will constantly connect to your integrated platforms, download your orders, update any existing orders within the software, update your stock levels and pass any information to your integrated accounts package if you have one. You can see the service in action at any time by clicking on the logs link in the top right hand corner. This shows you a script of what the service is doing as it connects to each individual channel in turn and downloads your orders and updates your stock levels. As your orders come down, they'll be presented within the order module. You can sort this grid um, and configure the grid to show exactly what you wish to see. Uh, but we can see the date of the order, the channel it came from, the channel number, the customer, and its status. The grid will also show you whether the order has been passed to your integrated accounts package. In this example, we're using Sage, and you can see here the Sage invoice number that's been created within the Sage 50 accounts package. Your order list effectively becomes your action list, and you can change this so you only see orders that need to be processed. So for example, we can see here some orders that have already been processed and dispatched. So to take them out of view, if we click on filter, only show me dispatched. And then we select all of the dispatched and we can change their status to completed. 
So that leaves us with a list of orders that need to be actioned. Uh, we can use tray box for picking and packing lists by selecting all of the orders. We can simply right click and print picking lists and packing lists and invoices, etc. Once the orders have been picked, packed and shipped, if we go to the shipping module in tray box, that provides us a list of all of the open orders. It's split into all channels or Amazon sales only. Simply select all of the orders within the list and click on dispatch and that will mark all of the orders as dispatched upon the relevant sales channels. As discussed, if you do wish to pass your downloaded sales to an integrated accounts package, integration is held within the sales channel. So if I double click on our eBay channel, we go to Search 50 because that's the accounts package we chose in our generic settings. And we can see here we've got our settings for how we're going to pass our data across to Sage. So we can choose, for example, between product invoices, which give us stock in Sage, service invoices, sales on invoices, or there is an option to create summary entries as batch invoices in your accounts package. Moving to customers, this is where you can decide how customers are going to be created within your accounts package. So you've got a choice where you can create an individual unique customer in your accounts package for each buyer, or you can choose to allocate all of your sales against a single generic customer. So in this example, we're allocating all of our eBay sales to a customer account in Sage called eBay sales. The nominals tab allows us to allocate different sales to different nominals in our accounts package. The receipts allows us to allocate different types of payment methods to different bank accounts which is really good for reconciliation. And we have a section here for shipping and a section for tax codes. There's also at the end, a final section called fields, which allows the user to tweak what information is passed to the invoices and the custom records in Sage that we create. Your accounts integration is done on a channel by channel basis, which means that you can have different rules for different channels and present your data differently in your accounts package. This means that Tradebox can be automatically creating your entries in your accounts package for you. Here we can see a list of invoices that Tradebox has created and we can see um, which platform they've come from and the order number. These have all automatically been posted to the ledger so they've been paid off automatically, but you can configure Tradebox so that you can do that manually. Because the payment method has been allocated to a nominated bank within your accounts package, if we go to the bank section, we can see that different payments, for the invoices have been placed into different notional bank accounts, which makes reconciliation much, much easier. The main benefit though, is that Tradebox has automatically created your financial entries in Sagefear, saving you a massive amount of time, effort and money. Back in Tradebox, uh, we'll have a quick look at the reports module. The first page is the dashboard, which gives you an overview of the trading that's gone through Tradebox. But there are other reports, such as channel sales, sales of the last three years, products, etc. There's also an interesting report here called EU VAT thresholds. This report allows you to configure the VAT threshold for each EU country and show you how close you're getting to it within the current calendar year. If you are already VAT registered in an EU country, then there are options within Tradebox to assist you. So if we go to configuration and to tax rates, we can see here we've created a German VAT tax code for 19%. Back to configuration and if we go to countries, and we can see we've allocated that tax code against all income from Germany. This ensures that all sales from Germany get charged at 90% VAT. In terms of accounts integration, if we go back to the channel, to the accounts tab, and to tax codes, we can see that the Trebox German VAT tax code is matched to a Sage T19 tax code, which is itself has been opted out of the VAT return for the UK. If you are interested in Trebox, come to our website, trebox.co.uk. Uh, there is a free 14 day trial, it's all fully supported. Uh, we offer free onboarding and support all the way through via telephone, email and ticket. Uh, help desk is open between 9 to 5 on all working days.